Welcome to part two of my Mac app videos that where I've just been playing around with a bunch of new Mac apps that I've been really enjoying. I'll put a link to part one in the description below. You can go check it out, but there's not really a specific order you need to watch this in. It's just more Mac apps. This video is sponsored by Setapp. There's a lot of apps to cover, so let's get into it. Quiet Meat is an extremely simple but useful utility. Whenever you start a virtual meeting, it pauses your music. That's it. It works with all the major meeting apps like FaceTime, Zoom, WebEx, Teams, and more. You can even enable a setting that resumes your music upon ending your meeting. Just incredibly useful, especially if you're like me, I always have music going. There's basically two exceptions when I'm in this office that music isn't going. When I'm recording a video like this and when I'm having a meeting. Homey is a very powerful but simple extension. This gives you control of your HomeKit devices right from the menu bar. I love this for triggering different scenes in my house. If you want to take it even further, you can trigger HomeKit devices based on the status of your Mac. So you could turn on your office lights when you turn on your Mac. You can also assign keyboard shortcuts to scenes, which is another great use for the app HyperKey that I mentioned in the first video. Camo gives you advanced controls for using your iPhone as a webcam on your Mac. Now, Mac OS has a feature built in already called Continuity Camera that allows you to use your iPhone as a webcam, whether it's wirelessly or wired. It's really cool, but if you want some more advanced controls, Camo is that next step up, and I really like it. I've been doing a lot of video podcasts lately, and I just want some more fine-tuned controls, and this is where Camo comes in. With Camo, you can adjust the exposure, white balance, and even lens selection. You can also choose from some color presets or make your own. You can also build or use the built-in overlays. This way you can put your name and website in your camera feed so people know who you are. Another feature I really like about Camo is you can select the camera and the microphone very easily right in the app. But what I really appreciate is you can select different devices. So I can use my iPhone as the camera, but I could use my Shure SM7B as the microphone. Now you can do this through system settings, but I always forget where they are in system settings now that Mac OS got a redesign of its settings page and it's kind of confusing. This video is sponsored by Setapp. The variety of apps and services on the market may feel overwhelming. Some people will be glad to help you drown in those tons of options. And some people would go into complete denial, but often the truth is somewhere in the middle. If there's a really good tool, why not use it? Setapp helps you embrace those opportunities without drowning in an ocean of options, helping you opt only for the good ones without draining your wallet as well. Their Mac and iOS app selection is made to cover as many user cases as possible, powering you up in everything that you are professionally using your devices for. Once subscribed, you get access to more than 230 apps and tools, and they're constantly updating and adding more to this while keeping and maintaining their high quality standards. This way you can make sure you're not missing out on any of the cool new apps in the app world. Some of my favorites are CleanShot X for giving me more advanced controls over screenshots and screen recordings, Better Touch Tool for automating device input and actions, and Solver for giving me an advanced calculator that I can use with natural language. There is a free seven day trial to set up. And then after that, it's just $9.99 a month. I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can go check it out. Be sure to check it out. There's some really cool stuff in Setup. My thanks to Setup for sponsoring this video. Vivid is an app for the M1 and M2 MacBook Pros with the HDR displays. This will crank the display brightness up to the HDR media level. Now this isn't something you could normally access in the OS. This makes the screen incredibly bright. And what I like using this for is when I'm working outside. If you're in direct sunlight, even at max level normal brightness on the MacBook Pro screen, it's still not quite bright enough when in direct sunlight. And I'm in sunny California here, it gets bright. So what I use when I'm working outside is I use Vivid to just crank up that brightness. And what I appreciate is you can assign a keyboard shortcut to Vivid to just toggle it on and off. 
Permute is a great app for people that have to deal with a lot of different file types. This will quickly convert images, videos, and more to different file types. So I get a lot of different files from companies I work with in file formats that uh, I don't I don't like to work with like I'm kind of a little picky when it comes to like images I prefer them to be PNGs uh, I prefer video files that I edit with to be MPEG-4 all that different stuff So I use permute to convert those files You just drag and drop the files in, select the file type you want it to be and then click run and then it'll convert them Hand Mirror is a really specific app and it sits in your menu bar and when you click on it It activates your camera I find this great to run right before I start a meeting. I use this right before meetings to make sure I'm looking decent. Maybe I need to go put a hat on or something. I also use this to check the background, make sure I don't have like any embargoed hardware or something like that, or something I'm not ready to quite talk about in a video uh, behind me. And that way I can just kind of like, you know, move it to the side out of, out of the feed. Hand mirror is also a part of setup, so you can just go and download it and check it out. Dropover is an app that's been on my radar for a while. The way this works is when you drag a file, shake it around, and a box will appear. You can save files here for temporary storage or sharing. This is extremely useful for people like me that don't like to have files and mess on their desktops. You can add multiple files to a dropover shelf. You can also create multiple dropover shelves. Once you have files in a shelf, you can click the menu and choose where to send them. This includes things like sending them to other applications, getting public links with them with services like iCloud, or running them as an input for a shortcut. This is a great way to deal with a stack of files incredibly quickly. When dragging a file, you can hover over the quick action icon to quickly send a file to a service. Fig is a plugin for Terminal that brings autocomplete to the app. This is exactly what I need. I use Terminal just enough that I, I need to use it, but I can never remember the exact commands. Like I, I forget names and I get things mixed up very easily. This speeds up my terminal uses and decreases my dependence on Googling, you know, terminal-esque questions. So that's it for part two. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what your all time favorite Max apps are in the comments below. My thanks to Setup for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.